Hi guys, I am Liviu and welcome back to my channel. So it is here, TBS Memo with uh, Tracer inside and also a JR module on the back for you to use any other module you want. For me, that's the TBS Crossfire. I have been flying with this for over four months now and it's my daily driver for this period. I will go over what I think about it and take it apart for you to see what makes it tick. When I first received this from TBS I was like, oh damn, another remote? But when I actually hold it in my hands and saw it was a full-size remote, I don't know, something just clicked inside my head because I'm usually not a fan of small remotes because I have been flying big remotes for so many years it's just uncomfortable for me to use small remotes so I was the happiest man alive when I saw that the TBS was making a big size remote so very happy with that my first impression when I saw the logo here, TBS Tracer was like, okay, I'm not using TBS Tracer, but I calmed myself down and I saw that there is a JR module so that I can use my Crossfire without any issues. Still, TBS Tracer, even though it's a 2.4G system, it performs just perfect when it comes to speed. It is freaking light speed faster than Crossfire, so it makes sense for those that want to race or just uh, close flying, but I am, um, I am doing long range, I am doing a lot of bandos where signal degrades quite a lot, so I am more confident using Crossfire, but that's just me. With this remote you will have both chances, like I am because I have some uh, setups with TBS Tracer and it's pretty simple to switch between them. The form factor for me at least it's the perfect size. I like the fact that I have here those switches. The screen is a tad bigger than the Tango. Let's power it on. Obviously this one uses freedom takes, but I am definitely sure we will see OpenTX on it uh, soon. As you can see the voltage says 3.7 volts and that's because it is using a one cell voltage to power all the remote. But the trick here is that they are using two 18650s in parallel for more capacity on the battery. I can say that uh, for one week I had no issues running uh, the remote with one charge using it for long range and normal freestyle, long range with crossfire on one watt, so more current draw on that um, setup. Obviously you can choose different types of 18650s with more capacity or smaller capacity, it's your choosing. The sticks feel exactly like the Tango and I am definitely sure that when we open this up we will see the same um, design. That's great because uh, Tango had a pretty nice feel to the, um, to the gimbals so I am expecting to see the same thing inside. The feel of the gimbals is um, very natural and works perfectly. I didn't change the tension on the gimbals yet I still feel they are a little bit too loose for my feeling, but that's just my personal opinion. Everything else on the remote just works for the past four months. As I said, I just took it out, powered it on and uh, went flying. It um, goes into my backpack pretty easy. Most of the time I don't even take out the diamond antenna from my Crossfire module. I just um, slide it like this in the backpack and it fits pretty nicely. With the T18 I had issues finding the right angle and uh, the right pocket to store it in my backpack but with this uh, TBS Mambo everything fits nicely in my backpack so I really like that. From four months of use you can see scratches here and there. I don't know if uh, the final product will uh, have different plastic or not so the wear 
looks to be acceptable. I had no issues whatsoever with it. Let's close it. This is the, the battery bay. And as I've said, we have two 18650 batteries, which are connected in parallel. The fit of the batteries is quite snug, so I will use this screwdriver to poke it up. Very good idea to have it so snug in uh, inside because, well, you don't want your remote to stop working, so yeah. Another good thing is that being in parallel, you can actually power it with only one. Let's see if I am right or not. So only one 18650, it should start up. Welcome to Mambo. So as I've said, only one 18650 and it works. Very snug fit, I like it. I don't know if it's possible for you to use other type of battery, but I would say that this um, design works pretty well, especially that you can find bigger capacity batteries right now, like uh, 3500 or even higher. So that's good. To open it up, we have four screws here, which are hex screws. One screw here. We have another screw here. Very rugged screws. As you can see. Okay, fourth screw is out. And as you can see, the case is held by these plastics too, on the sides. Here is the USB Type-C for charging. And take the case out without those plastics, which is pretty interesting. Or not, yeah, the plastics are just sitting there. So the plastics are out, the case is out, exactly like in the Tango remote. Nothing is connected to the plastic whatsoever. As you can see, the design is fairly similar to the Tango, if not identical. The gimbals are screwed onto the main PCB and the PCB is connected to the plastic with other screws. What is pretty interesting is the included antenna, which is this one. It's a dipole for 2.4G, the tracer. And even more interesting is that we can see here a breakable tab in the case if you want to install a separate antenna. Yes, they give you the option to use an external antenna for 2.4G, but the internal antenna for general flying I found pretty decent, so I don't know. I would not bother because I am using Crossfire, but if you are a Tracer user, maybe you could find some uh, benefits in using an uh, external antenna, especially if you want to have different polarization because this one is horizontal. So yeah, if we look closely on the PCB, we will see that we have gimbal written on the PCB next to some screws. So I am betting that those screws are for holding the gimbals and other screws have front written to them. So I will take out all the screws which are not connected to the gimbal so we can take out everything and look what we have underneath. Yep, we have to unscrew the button screws and I suspect these two. I suspect they have a special tool for tightening these uh, nuts. Instead I'm uh, trying my best to take it out. Do it yourself style. Okay. Does it come out easily? Or we need to do something special about it? I have no idea.
Okay. Let's be careful and not kill the display port. I have here one cable which is for the speaker, which I don't think will be a problem yet. No, I need to disconnect it. Okay. And as you can see, I was a bit afraid about the trim screws on the back and I was pretty right about that. We have special plastic things that stay on the PCB that have a special screw. So it was not actually needed for me to, to pop off those screws. Taking the LCD flat connection and LCD backlight connector out so that I can have a better look on the PCB itself. These are the trim buttons so when you take it off only take out the screws that are marked front and I have one more trim which is here. I have to say that I always enjoy taking out stuff for the very first time because you don't know exactly how it is put together. It's like a treasure hunt. So this is the motherboard for the TBS Mambo. Basically we have the same philosophy used on the Tango. We have the main PCB which holds everything on it from the gimbals, trims, buttons, everything is on one big PCB. Uh, we have the MCU which is the same like in um, the Tango. Most definitely split uh, firmware style like in the Tango. We have the transmitter firmware and the remote firmware, Wi-Fi and all of the jazz. We do see some unpopulated PCB footprints over here close to the USB Type-C and inside here we also see a section without parts and they look to be power related I don't know maybe they have some um, ideas for the future here instead is the interesting thing if we look on the other side we can see let me turn it like so for you to see better we can see here a student module and it's supposed to be a uh, Crossfire Nano receiver I don't know what their intent is for the future with this um, with this uh, module footprint here. Maybe you can just uh, install here a Crossfire receiver and use it to control this one, like a student port or something like that. I have no idea. We have the LCD flat flex backlight. Here is most definitely the flashing connector used by them uh, in uh, manufacturing. Pretty neat idea actually, castellated holes here with um, aligning holes, pretty neat idea. We have the SD card which is accessible from the side of the case, you don't have to dismantle the case to access the SD card which is uh, pretty neat. Going up we have unit 6, <laughs> I don't know, I presume this is uh, unit 6 made, but this is the tracer module, a very cool tracer module it can do one watt pretty cool thing is that we have two antennas for this tracer module we have the included antenna on the motherboard and we also have a second antenna which is um, an ufl connector that you can connect an uh, ufl to sma jumper cable and install it in the case if you want external antenna and inside the settings of the remote you can um, actually choose what antenna you are using for the tracer module and I find that pretty nice to have in a remote like this especially in a community where we liked to do a lot of mods and add things to our remotes another pretty interesting thing I noticed and this has nothing to do with any feature but rather than manufacturing idea is I don't know if you can notice but all the switches are mounted with an angle if you can look here 
this pin is a little higher, this pin less higher and this pin barely visible on the face of the PCB and this is how they managed to do the angle of the switch and that's a pretty interesting manufacturing idea I like it and I presume they have a special jig in the manufacturing process that um, keeps the, the connectors in that particular angle pretty interesting and I always like to see these little things that go into manufacturing a product like this. Okay, I'm pretty curious to see how the tracer module looks like inside. This is the tracer module. We have the transceiver, which is the small IC, and we have the front end, which is a Skyworks front end for 2.4G. 30 dBm means 1 Watt and in the manual they say it can go over 1 Watt but um, in the menu you will see the option for 1 Watt which I believe is the way to go for 2.4 and you should not settle lower than that for 2.4 however good the transmission system is when you are transmitting on 2.4 is by nature a little bit harder to reach greater distances so higher power will help you what else can i say oh what i noticed is that each battery has its own separate line and also a fuse on each battery and i suspect we have here some um, voltage measuring on each battery to see exactly what's what i don't know or balancing but a pretty nice touch is uh, to see fuses here in case one of the batteries has issues or something like that. Okay, let me put it back together and tell you my honest opinions about it. What are my final thoughts about it? Well, at least from my perspective, because I switched to it for over four months now, I am liking it. And I never thought about uh, going back to my previous remote. Changing remotes is a big deal. If you are a guy who likes small remotes, stay with the Tango. If you are the guy like me that likes big remotes because he got used to them for a very long time, then TBS Mambo is your remote. I like it and I will still use it. Obviously, there are many types of preferences out there in this FPV world, but um, this is my honest thoughts. I like it. Test it out. Make your own mind on it. And saying this, I will end this video. Thank you very much, guys. And don't forget, if you enjoy my videos, please support me by subscribing to my channel and clicking that notification bell. It really helps. And till the next time, I wish you all the best. Bye.